Hey, hey, get a load of this guy. Yeah, get, get a load of that guy. Yeah, they think they know about Gen 1 Pokemon. Yeah, they think they know about Gen 1 Pokemon. Oh, you know how to get missing now. Oh, you know of how to get Mew. Oh, you know that you can fish inside of the gym statues. Oh, you're very, very, very smart and intelligent. Yes, yes, yes. But do you know the 14 obscure secrets in Gen 1 Pokemon? I don't think you do. I think it'd be incredible if you knew any of these secrets. We're going to play a game today. We're going to play, do we know any of the following things? Let's find out if we do. You, know you can get a free level 100 Nidoran. That is really fast. I Smith is not speaking that quickly, but Smith does absolutely love Generation 1 Pokemon. Actually, Smith is creating a ROM hack for Generation 2 Pokemon right now. Sorry, no, Generation 1, I can't speak with my mind correctly. They're fixing Pokemon Yellow. They're making it better while retaining what made it so good in the first place, just making it a little bit more enjoyable to play. And I think it's really admirable to genuinely put in the work and effort to improve a game rather than just, you know, doing what I do and yapping YouTube videos. Did you know you can get a free level 100 Nidoking King before the first gym in- That's- No, I didn't- <laughs> What? Come on, yellow. Today we'll be- Hey, I, it's not gonna be- Oh, you can grind one up, by the way. Yeah, you can just sit there and grind up um, the forest. Oh, I- Wait, you wouldn't even get a moonstone. No, you can't do that. You wouldn't have a moonstone. So it's impossible unless you do- You get 14 obscure secrets just like this in Gen 1 Pokemon. So to get Here this King, you first want to head into Viridian Forest and go back a few long columns of grass until you get to the trainer standing sideways. Walk to okay. the right so they're out of frame and align yourself so that they come onto the screen the same step as they challenge you to battle. Hold start as soon as you step into their sight and then use an escape rope from your menu. He'll try to- You can get an escape rope this early in the game? Why would you even need one, though? battle you, making the game think you're in a fight, but you just go back to the Pokemon Center. From here, go back into the forest and walk in the grass until you encounter a level 4 Caterpie. Lord and at this point, Pikachu is incredibly confused. It's thinking pika P, pika P, 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 which translates roughly to, what is going on? Why are we teleporting all over the place? Where is my family? Or it's attack six stages with Pikachu's growl and then make it faint. Next, you- With Lord's attack six stages with growl and then make it faint? Okay. You want to go towards Mount Moon on the eastern route of Pewter City and have the NPC take you back to the gym. And now, when you walk into Viridian Forest, a battle with a level 1 Nidoking will automatically trigger. Simp ah yes, of course, as we should have known. I think the craziest thing about this is that people had to find this. People had to find this and write this down. People had to figure this out. Someone had to test this. How did you find this? No one's doing this. Why did you do this? We lower its health to catch it and you're almost there. Have it get into a wild encounter but use well, I guess when you sell 35 million copies of a game, one of them's got to be a psycho that's going to do something like this. Another Pokemon to finish it off so that it doesn't gain more than 50 XP. And so with that, your Nidoking will suddenly grow to level 100. Ready to take on Brock and maybe challenge a world record speedrun. Okay, that's pretty impressive. You know that one? Perhaps we've earned your subscription, but... Ah, Smith, you're already... Sub I'm already subscribed. I can't... You can't earn my subscription again. You can't do it again, but... Hey, maybe he earned your subscription and you should click that link in the description and go and subscribe because they're doing some great stuff over there. Fear not, red and blue players, for while you don't get Nidoking King privilege, there's a way for you to avoid fighting Brock entirely. Normally, if you try to leave Pewter before battling, the same dude from the yellow bug will send you back to the gym. But you Okay, guess. It's going to be some kind of like walk through walls code, right? You actually hold the start button as he finishes talking and the menu will come up before he starts walking back. You're and you save and reload and then... You'll be able to just continue Person's on. locked here, but if it's already on save, you can press A through to save your game and go through the regular walk back. Restarting your oh, game brings you to okay. the edge of Pewter, but it makes the NPC walk you back improperly, and he basically glitches out of the map. When you return to the spot, <laughs> you'll see he's gone, and if you walk by where he used to be standing, you won't be interrupted by his dialogue, and you're free to go straight to Mount Moon and take on Misty as your first gym leader. Hey, does anyone know where the gym badge guide went? I think he I think someone someone said they saw him walk through a mountain. I, I I he has my phone. I really need that. I need to call my mom. It's her birthday and it's Mother's Day on the same day. Where is the where is he? Also super random, but while we're on the topic of Brock, did you ever notice he is the only gym leader Show to list. give you a badge while you're still in the battle screen? For some Oh, no, that's I was just gonna say he's the only gym leader that's not gonna show. The reason it's not in the overworld like every other leader. Now, skipping gym leaders is neat. I think. 
think they programmed it like that and then they just changed it and forgot to go back. I genuinely think they just forgot. They're like, oh, oh yeah, ah, it's fine. But did you know you can also skip the need to use stones to evolve? For example, what? if you catch an onyx in rock tunnel, you can use it to evolve Staryu. To do this, you simply what? have Staryu level up in battle and then switch to your onyx to finish the fight. For some reason, the game code uses the same memory address to detect whether an item is used or whether a Pokemon is in battle. And it just so happens onyx aligns with the water stone. And the what? thing that really blows my mind about this is I've- Hey, hey, this makes sense. Let me explain why. Onyx is stone. Never seen this accidentally happen before, especially because it's not just Onyx that this works with. Doing this with Exeggutor evolves Moonstone Pokemon. You can do Thunderstone evolutions with Growlithe, then Leafstone Evos with Psyduck. This I always say that Gen 1 was made and held together with paper mache hopes and dreams, and I genuinely do think that that is true. Speaking of items, do you have any idea how broken X accuracy is in this generation? So in modern no. Pokemon, the I do know that Dire Hit is broken because it doesn't actually work. In fact, I think it lowers your critical hit ratio. X accuracy works just like any other X item, increasing accuracy by a set amount of stages. In Gen 1, however, instead of giving stage boosts, it Oh, it doesn't just max out your accuracy? It simply removes the accuracy check. That means it nice. never misses no matter what. 100 sand attacks, doesn't matter, no accuracy check. So, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty OP. But remember that the TM given to the player for beating the eighth gym is Fissure, a free one-hit KO move just in time to take on the Elite Four. As Isn't the strat in speedruns is that you're supposed to use an X accuracy and then just spam horn drill because you one-shot everything? As long as you outspeed the Pokemon you're using the one-hit KO move on, you kill it. Pop an X accuracy down and X speed for good measure and, and you just win. Just, just free. Now, one item in the games that you don't actually need is the bicycle. So normally when you leave Celadon to head did he just walk through a slow relax? Like, what's going on? Cycling road, the guard will check for your bike, and if you don't have it, he's like, no. You oh, oh, and there's just a guy there. Of course, there's just a man in the wall, because there's always a man in the wall. There's always a man in the wall, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a man on that wall. There's a, there's a man, there's a man in on that wall. In fact, there's actually a wall behind. There's a man in that wall, too. You don't have a man in your walls, then do you even have a house? Do you even have a home? It's what really makes a house a home. You can't pass. But when you're talking to this guard, there is a brief moment in his dialogue where you have the ability, if you're holding left on the D-pad, to simply walk forward. He's like, no, don't <laughs> walk forward. And if you're holding left, you just do anyway. This Yeah, because what's he going to do? This isn't an actual police officer. It's just a security guard. And as we know, security guards don't have any legal method to stop you. They can just say, hey, don't do this. But if you do it anyway, what are they going to do? Are they going to assault you? That's against the law. They don't have the legal right to do that. What's he going to do? Really? Just walk past him. What's he going to do? Grab you? No, he's not going to touch you. He's scared. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Glitch is really easy to do. And upon stepping onto Cycling Road, the game just assumes you had a bicycle because you got through and you just head on down to Fuchsia City on a bike. There is one area you can't get into these games, however, and it's rumored to be a cut island city. Located between Vermilion and Celadon City, completely surrounded by water, are old game concept drawings making reference to an oh. additionally planned city with no walkable routes to it. Oh, I've never heard whispers of this before. Now, this alone got the community speculating, but it was then further confirmed as in the game files, there is an 11th flyable area known as what? 011. By analyst. I've never seen this before. What the hell? Okay, this is Realizing sick. This code, data miners noticed that it's very likely this area was intended to be another city, as the only places you can fly in this game are the towns, cities, and Indigo Plateau. First is there any way to access the fly spot? Like, can we enable it and turn it on and see where it goes? Furthermore, it does make a lot of sense that an island city would be located next to where the SS Anne is. Especially when you consider that the island would also be right next to the fourth gym. YouTuber The Obsessive Gamer has even speculated that there was originally a different order of routes for the game. You would beat the third gym, Lieutenant Surge in Vermilion City, Oh my god, and then you would take the boat, you would take the SSN to the island city, which you could then use to get to Saladon. Oh my god. Take the SSN to the island and continue from here up to Celadon. Oh, and wait, what's that? Celadon, the fourth gym. In retrospect, this- 
and instead you go around, which actually, yeah, that would make more sense because right now you have to backtrack to Cerulean, then go back through Rock Tunnel to Lavender, go past the sixth gym leader city, and then go to Saladon. It would make more sense if you didn't have to backtrack and you could just like have a more free flowing route where you just take the boats to a separate area instead. That does make more sense. This makes so much sense. I've always found the completely nonsensical path Red forces you to go on through Rock Tunnel, past Lavender Town, and beneath the underground to get there to just be weird? It feels very shoehorned in. The city was likely cut as the game cartridges didn't have enough storage to fit it, and they had to figure out another route to sell it on. Another yeah, that does, it does really feel like it's a kind of a backup plan. The weird feature of this game is the invisible PC, located in the hotel of Celadon. Okay, this is the first one that I have seen before and I do know about. City. This area greatly resembles a Pokemon Center, and it's quite obvious that they copied this design. When you go to the far corner where the PC would be it's in the Poke just Center, that. you're able to <laughs> access one despite there being no sign of one actually being there. Another. It would be really hard to use the keyboard of a PC that wasn't there. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I still need to look at the keyboard when I'm typing sometimes. I mean, listen, I've been using keyboards for many, many years. Decades, potentially. But when I'm typing, sometimes I just need to look down. I just need to see what's going on. I, I need those letters still. People that type on keyboards that don't have the letters and have just like random icons or just nothing on it instead, they confuse me. They do scare me a little bit. So I'm like, okay, you know where the keys are. What else do you know? What else are you hiding in that brain of yours? You know a little too much. Another interesting item in these games is the Polka Doll. Available in the Celadon department store, this item allows you to run from any wild encounter, regardless of speed or level. Does it work now, on Marowak? Normally, to get past the ghost at the top of the Lavender Tower, you need a self scope to identify it. But, and this is, I mean, a classic exploit you're actually able to bypass it by simply using a polka doll it makes the That's entire cool. rocket hideout section skippable and saves a considerable time chunk for players speed running now next i've got another classic for you did you know you can surf on statues in this game it yeah we know we can do that wait did that wait in the intro of the video did i say fishing statues or surfing statues because if i said fishing statues i meant to say surfing statues and now it's way too far into the video where people have already commented on my mistake and they definitely, a lot of them won't even make it this far into the video, so they'll never know that I'm correcting my mistake now, even though I made a little bit of a Freudian slip. It's not very useful at all, but one interesting way to use this is in Lance's Elite 4 room. You can perform a simple save glitch that allows you to start surfing through the bottom statue and it actually lets you go back to Agatha's room. Is it useful? No. What? Do I no. love getting to places I'm not supposed to go in old video games? Absolutely. Now, you know, I was really cool. able to get that Nidoking before. Well, this is by no means the only Pokemon you can get through this exploit. Through the Yellow Viridian Forest exploit alone, just tweaking the Pokemon we fainted in Viridian Forest was able to yield us a level 7 Voltorb and. What? I, I've never seen this exploit before in my life. How are they still finding new things? Is this an old exploit? Is this something I'm supposed to know about this? Ivysaur's here? An Ivysaur. But oh man, does the exploit extend further than this. Anywhere you can come onto screen as a trainer loads and fly away, you can use this exploit to basically bring up any Pokemon in the game. Most that's the Mew glitch. That's how you do the Mew glitch. Notably, and this is another classic, players have found a combination of trainers yep. and ID numbers to force spawn Mew into the game. Once again, very important to note, you can do this on a basic cartridge of any of these three games. But Sorry, baby, no downloadable patches on these games. I love the art of the covers so much. I don't know what it is about the art. It must just be nostalgia. But whenever I look at the blue version cartridge, I'm like, oh my God, look at that. It just gives me an immediate boost of serotonin. It just gives me the happy chemicals. If I knew that on a bad day, I could just load up the blue version box art and immediately just be happy. That's an insane cheat code. That's such a good life hack. Hey, new life hack just dropped. Look at Pokemon box art. It's, it, it works every time. Listen to the OST too. Works every time. But it goes even further than that. Did you know there was a battle programmed but never made accessible in the Wait, wait, is the professor? Oh, it's already on screen, so it's not going to be like my cool moment where I'm like, oh, I figured it out for us. Yeah, it's it's Professor Oak. To fight Professor Oak. The rival fight wasn't meant to be the final fight in the game. Oak's team consists of a Tauros, Exeggutor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and the leftover starter that neither you or your rival picked. Another 
Okay, what is it with the strong trainers using Executor? The rival uses Executor. Professor Oak uses Executor. Why? Executor is dog water in Generation 1. There's so many other good grass types that get you. There's like Victory Bell. I mean, there's Vile Plume. There's a few other cool ones. Why is everyone using Executor? Why are they the best? Doesn't even get any good moves. The strange yet interesting trick is the NPC moonwalking glitch. When face to face with various <laughs> NPCs, all you have to do is press the A button exactly one frame before any NPC turns around. Instead of turning around, they will instantly look back at you, and once you're finished talking to them, they'll moonwalk away instead of turning. Now, did you know you could go to a special glitch city using an exploit in the Safari yeah. Zone? What yeah, we did know about well, this one. You know what? If you're watching this video, yeah, you probably know about the old glitch city. But I promise yeah. you, there's more. All you have to do is enter the safari zone, go back inside, and select no when asked if you want to leave. Next, save the game and soft reset. Once you restart, go back inside and the NPC will get confused, thinking you want to enter the safari zone rather than leaving it. Choose not to enter and the game will think you're inside it, but now you're out. When your step counter is still up, if you go into Giovanni's gym, <laughs> what is this, man? Who's figuring this out? I'm just getting exasperated thinking about this. Who, who wrote this down? Did someone play the game to get to this point? Who's doing this? What's their name? Are they okay? Is everything all right? And time it so that your character is spinning on the tiles as your time runs up. Your character will now be stuck in infinite spin mode. From here, you simply grab a bike and head towards a ledge. Your character will spin off the ledge and perform a beautiful, perfect 360 <laughs> degree rotation. Wait, that's so sick. <laughs> Making him officially the first character to ever do tricks on a bike in Pokemon. That's so sick. That's From really cool. Player all right, all right. There may be Generation 2 stuff too. There may be Generation 2. Maybe we could take a look at that, but maybe you should subscribe to Smith first. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to use code Paris of Gamer Sub so you can get caffeine and caffeine free variants of your most favorite, most delicious flavors at Gamer Sub so you can use code Paris. It's less than a dollar per serving. There's international shipping. There's no reason not to. And if you want to see more of my dumb face, you can always subscribe here as well.